-hmm. Well, some of the special interests that benefit from um, relatively lenient rules on adjudications have, have said that the changes that you're making uh, have stifled their ability to, for example, bring in skilled workers that they say our country needs and made it uh, hard for people coming through the legal process of just how Americans want immigration to happen legally uh, and that the things that you're doing are getting in the way of that. Things like requiring interviews or additional evidence to support an application. Do you think that's fair? No. I mean, I think, uh, well, there's two points. Uh, first, the, uh, what, what these employers and these uh, organizations are saying, and I want to address the merit of their, of their, uh, of their complaint, and also then I want to talk about what they're doing. First, with, what, with respect to what they're saying. I don't disagree. I, I think that um, it, is, it is almost certainly the case that uh, employers uh, uh, who, I mean, it, I, uh, I was an undergraduate at MIT, so I'm, I'm a STEM guy, and I know what these employers want and what they're looking for. I remember they would come on campus, they interview all these people, you know, they'd interview 50 or 60 people, they would identify 20 or 30 that they want to offer jobs to. Many of those, especially at a place like MIT, are foreign nationals. It's, it was the case in my day, it's the case now. And I can totally understand if an employer has identified an individual person that they interviewed on campus, and they want to give a job to that person, and that person then, maybe they do a PT, you know, so they can start working for them, but then they can't get an H-1B because the, the program is oversubscribed, the cap is not sufficiently high to guarantee that person getting a, a, a work visa. I can completely understand how frustrating that would be to the employer, and uh, I think, uh, you know, if, if Congress wants to address that problem, because that's not something really we can do in the executive branch, I can't change the... Uh, uh, the criteria for getting an H-1B, I can't change the cap, you know, the, the, it is what it is. But if Congress were to ever touch that, I would suggest that they, whatever they do, it be done in such a way that, that that problem is addressed. That specific problem of employers not being able to get the highly qualified, highly educated people, that, the specific, specific people that they want, people. the specific person that they want for that job. And uh, there are a number of bills out there that kind of get at this, uh, but the main point would be we need to, we, whatever we do on that point, it should be directed towards ensuring that the truly, truly most qualified people that we need, that we need in this country, get the visas, the, whatever the limited number of visas is. That should be the goal, and whatever legislative uh, approach is taken to address that problem should be well calibrated to address that problem. At the same time, uh, clearly, um, any reforms, anything, any touching of that program should be mindful of the effects, the possible adverse effects on American workers. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple fix, for example, just banning the ability of employers to fire American workers and replace them with H-1Bs, that sh it should not be permitted. Right. Not, and that has actually happened. Of course not it's happened. Yeah, we all know it's happened. And it's, I'm not talking about non-displacement. I'm talking replacement. Uh, I, I'm aware of, of the provisions in, in uh, 212 about displacement and the window and all that. This, mm -hmm. I'm talking about prohibiting replacement of American workers, intentional replacement of American workers with foreign workers. It, things like that need to be c taken into account. You need to look at the wages, all these issues. But I do believe there is a way, there is a sensible way to reform programs like that to ensure that these employers can get the workers that they truly need. And I don't disagree. I mean, I've seen it. I know. I, and it's hard. Um, but at the same time, we do need to be mindful of the adverse effects on the American labor market and, and, and in particular tech workers these days. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am not unsympathetic to their complaints. I, I would say more generally on the things we're doing on H-1Bs and all that, the new worker visas. We haven't really done that much yet. I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the types of things that we've talked about at the agency so far in the past year or so, even before I came there, have been relatively small things. Um, you know, asking adjudicators to look more carefully at whether the wages that are being proffered to the worker correspond to the skill level of the job. That, that is seems a, like common sense. That is a completely rational thing to do. And if it requires more evidence to substantiate the connection between the proffered wage and the, and the skill level, so be it. 
let that evidence be produced. And uh, I, there is absolutely nothing uh, malevolent about that. That is a, a normal, rational thing for the agency to ask for to improve the integrity of that particular visa program.